I want to share with you the inspirational story of an extraordinary woman, Njeri Tube. Njeri is from Kenya. She went through a lot of trauma as a child and decided as a very young mother that she wanted to start all over and create a new life for herself and ensure that her daughters were never subjected to the same torture that she had gone through. And she moved to the United States, made a life for herself, and ultimately created a women's foundation called the Upendo Foundation as a result of not only wanting to protect her own children, but girls across Africa. She now speaks all over the globe and has been able to share her message out of the work that we did together. I'm really excited for you to meet and Jerry. Here we go in her own words. Oh my goodness, Jerry, <laughs> it, what a gift to be with you. I'm so happy you're here. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you. You are a true light in this world. Would you tell us your story? I want people to, to grasp who you are before you speak. Oh, okay. So like Cheryl said, my name is Njeri Tube, and I was born and raised in Nairobi, Kenya. So 24 of my years of life, I was in Kenya. But since then, I'm, an Ameri I'm a Kenyan American, really, <laughs> because the other half has been now in America. I'm a mother of three and a grandmother to two. And uh, my journey started, you know, my, my journey started when I was 12 years of age and went through so many traumatic event after event after event. And that means at age 12, I had to go through female genital mutilation. And I didn't like what had happened to me. It just brought shame and that traumatized me. Then at age 19, I got uh, raped by a family friend, so-called. And here I was again, I had just finished my um, business diploma excited, ready to venture into the world, and this hits me. And so that was, again, another trauma. It was traumatic because of the things, the words that were spoken over me traumatized me. You know, how could you? You brought shame, disgrace to the family. You know, you're the first daughter. You're useless. You're, you know, all the negative words that come with that, that traumatize and wounds your soul. So here I am, there is just a compilation of uh, trauma after trauma. Now, with, with rape, I became suicidal because I thought I can't bring on more shame to this family. I'd rather die. But, you know, here I am. Again, I couldn't see it through, but I had a baby. So I shut in and I wanted to just run as far away as I could. And that's how I ended up venturing into looking for a way to come to the U.S. At age 24, I left Kenya with an airline ticket and $200 in my wallet. Here I am a single mom, not knowing when I'll ever see my children, but I had faith. And I just, I had this belief in me that nothing is impossible. And I wanted to do whatever I could to make sure that my daughters would never have to encounter what I went through as young girls. So, and I wanted to be able to, to, to start afresh. I left Kenya a very wounded, broken girl you know, and didn't really know, but that, that trauma, that wounding, that brokenness drove me far more to my goal of making sure that I don't have, my, my daughters will never have to do that. Well, that is so exquisite to be able in the midst of the pain that you experience mm -hmm. from the female genital mutilation to rape to all of the things that mm -hmm. you dealt with. Mm -hmm. In the midst of still healing from the pain, be able to share your journey in such a way that it protects others mm -hmm. is the ultimate act of courage. And you'd come to me when we met, you already were clear about this message and this purpose and this mission. Yes. To protect, to protect young girls, mm -hmm. because like you say, they are the future. Yes. And yet we had talked about, wouldn't it be a natural thing for you to get this message out to a bigger audience? Isn't it, isn't <laughs> that what, what really wants to happen in the universe? You know, isn't that yeah. what, what seems like all the doors are opening toward? Mm -hmm. 
you helping not just girls and women in Africa, but across the globe. Yes. Here. And, and part of that is going to be amplified if we can get your message out to a national audience here in America who can get behind your cause. And so that's exactly what we did. <laughs> and, and, I, and that's, I believe, Cheryl, that is what you are great at doing because every day I wake up, I feel like I, I want to hold a big megaphone <laughs> and shout this message like, who told you? Who told you you are damaged? Who said that to you? Because those words are stifling so many of our women from becoming the greatness of who we were created to be. And I believe a woman can endure so much, but still be able to pull herself up and still with a little strength and do much more. Imagine how much more we can be able to help women become whole and and all the problems we can be able to resolve in this world right just by people knowing about it and Correct. knowing that they can get involved with something like this. yes yeah which is why it's so absolutely essential for you to get your voice out to the world and now since you were on cnn's headline news nationwide you've been doing a lot of other media appearances <laughs> as well and speaking engagements say something about those so since i was on cnn um i shared uh, on my platform on my social media i shared with friends and uh, i remember this one local pastor he called me and he said jerry i need you to share and be one of our main speakers at a conference we are hosting here in rancho cordova and when I looked at the lineup of the people who were speaking, <laughs> I thought, you must be joking. I mean, one of the main speakers is a well-known man in the Christian community, Bishop Noel Jones. He has a church of 20,000 members. I'm thinking, Jerry? <laughs> and he said, oh, yes, Jerry, I need you to be and not just be before he before i said yes he had put my face on the flyer <laughs> <laughs> meanwhile all the speakers are looking and saying and jerry's going to be there why we must all be right. there <laughs> i had people calling me and say okay so tell us what's going on with you how huh? i saw you on a flyer with bishop noel jones exactly how did that happen and and i'm saying uh i don't know well i guess it's time for me to because he's one of those leaders, this gentleman, and says, I know who you are. People don't know who, what is in you, but I see it. And you need to open your mouth and speak this message of healing, this message that, of deliverance to people. And it's not just for women. It's for men and women. That's what he told me. Indeed. He said, not only are you going to be on this guest speaker line, but you're the first speaker who will open up this conference. <laughs> in your rightful place. In your rightful place. It's amazing how you have the same message before uh -huh. and after being on national TV on CNN. Yes, yes. But there's something about, it makes people take notice. Yes. Now, it, it positions you, it edifies you and your message so people can now hear it. Yes. Oh, well, as seen on CNN. Yes. And like bona fide, authentic speaking <laughs> on CNN, <laughs> not like... <laughs> You know, on some website, like, no. I, on, yes. And then after that, at the beginning of, um, of this year, no, in, in 2016, after 2016, after I had your, the interview with you, um, I have this young lady, I reached out to the local media to share with them what I do with Upendo. And they had, um, they came out to one of the schools and we did a Good Day Sacramento a morning clip. But this year, uh, the lady, I forwarded the, uh, the lady the interview for CNN. And it, this was, <laughs> it still blows my mind. A few days before my, my dad passed away, he, she called me and said, we need you to come and do Good Day Sacramento at the studio. And, and so my, and my father passes away. And she says, Jerry, are you sure 
that you want to do this. I said, let me tell you something. I was born to do this. You, you know, when there's a tragic tragedy or trauma in a country, the president does not sit down and cry. He suits up, washes his face and goes to, before the media and talks to the people <laughs> and mm. delivers the message he needs to deliver. Then mm. he can go back and mourn later. I said, I am that president. I was born to be a leader. And I can clearly hear my father saying to me, you better not forfeit that interview on Good Day Sacramento after what you've seen happen for you on CNN. So I, wore, I put on my big girl panties and washed up my face, cleaned up, and I went to you know, the, uh, the studios of Good Day Sacramento in, in, and did my interview in the morning. And the, ne the next day I was flying out to go to Africa to go bury my father. That's when it dawned on me, Jerry, you're born to lead. Yes. You're born to lead, you're born to be a voice. The circumstances should not cause you to waver or bump you off of your cause. You still have to speak. You, you will process the healing you'll, like anybody else, yeah. but the, the message has to continue. And at my father's funeral, I, I, I made a commitment. I said, Father, Daddy, I'm going to carry the legacy. Wherever I speak, they will know it's because I've, I'm from you and I'm honoring you. But if I keep my mouth quiet and if I shut my mouth, then I will not be carrying on the legacy and I'll not be honoring you. So since then, I've been to Uganda now where I spoke at a women's conference over 250 women. I've been invited into several nations. There's a nation asking me, Zambia asking me to go. South Africa, I'm being invited to go. You know, I'm Uganda to go back. I don't know what else. Imagine if I had a platform where now... People can know Jerry is available and she has this message she can share with us that can help us. Yes. I'm so sorry for the loss of your father and you have honored his legacy. And it, it, it's interesting, Cheryl, both daddies. Yes. You remember I spoke about my daddy here in America who put me through school. He also passed away like before, in, in less than five months, both of them left. And I knew this big girl has shoes to fill. <laughs> I, there's in the Bible, it talks about the Elijah, Elisha mantle. I really felt like Elisha, like pick up the mantle and run. It's time, everything we've taught you as a daughter, it's time for you to stand up and on, our, on our foundation and deliver the message. Well, you're delivering the message <laughs> so beautifully. And it is truly a privilege and an honor. Thank you, Cheryl. I have participated in any way with that. Thank you. And I look forward to, in any way, <laughs> helping you share your message as wide and as far as possible. Oh, thank you, Cheryl. This world needs to hear. I count myself privileged to have met you. 